The object is greenish brown with white spots, and it has four fins jutting from its side. This model tells the tale of a prehistoric creature and the woman who brought it back from the dead. This is a story about a curator, science, and mysteries of the deep sea. It's 1938 in the small South African city of East London. Located on the southeast coast, it has a bustling port and a thriving fishing industry. It also boasts a tiny natural history museum called the East London Museum. Its curator is 31-year-old Marjorie Courtney Latimer. Latimer has been fascinated by the natural world since childhood. So she's doing her best to improve the modest collection. Latimer loved the museum. It was her passion. And she knew that to be successful, she was going to need to grow the museum collections. She spends her time trying to acquire out of the ordinary artifacts that will pull in visitors. The more unusual, the more rare a species is, the more likely the public is going to engage and enjoy coming to the museum. She's even made pleas to local fishermen to alert her to any strange catches. And one day, her strategy pays off. She gets the call from the captain of a boat. He says that he's been out fishing in the deep waters off the east coast of Africa and has caught an odd creature in his net. Latimer wastes no time in meeting the man to check out the animal herself. And when she lays eyes on it, she finds a creature unlike any other. She observed a large fish with spots all along. And Latimer was amazed. It looked like nothing she had ever seen before. The beast is five feet long, weighs 127 pounds, with bony blue scales and four unusual pairs of stubby fins. Latimer transports the now dead fish back to the museum to determine what it is and where it came from. She began poring over all the annals of known fish in the region, but could find nothing that looked anything like what was laying in front of her. She wonders if it has the potential to finally put their museum on the map. Latimer was desperate to answer this scientific mystery, but she was floundering. Suspecting she has something very special on her hands, Latimer soaks the strange specimen in a formaldehyde solution and has it preserved by a taxidermist. The taxidermist was able to create a model that could be observed by the general public and by scientists. Then she reaches out to a renowned ichthyologist named James Smith to verify what exactly she has. Smith was a professor at Rhodes University and an expert in the study of fish. Latimer was hopeful that Smith could provide an answer to this puzzling question. He agrees to examine the fish, and in February 1939 arrives in East London. When he lays his eyes on the animal, Smith knows precisely what this is. It's a fish thought to have died out 65 million years earlier. It's called a coelacanth. Latimer was astounded by this information. This find is one of the most unique finds ever in human history. Rarely do organisms that have gone extinct magically show back up alive. Latimer's discovery was like finding a dinosaur magically showing up in Manhattan. When word of the incredible discovery spreads, crowds flood the once quiet museum to see this relic from the past. Latimer now had the specimen of all specimens, a million year old fish that still lives in the waters, was on display in her museum. Latimer not only saves her museum, she makes it famous. Since the discovery, nearly 200 of the aquatic behemoths have been found. The original 1938 specimen netted by the South African boat captain remains at the East London Museum in South Africa. Another is in the collection of the Field Museum. The story of the coelacanth continues to inspire the wonder and awe of nature and drives us to explore beyond our boundaries. Who knows how many other mysteries remain in the ocean? Today, this model of a coelacanth is on display at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. It recalls a young curator 
who went fishing for an answer and reeled in the catch of a lifetime. It is beautifully decorated with colored flowers and a golden trim. There is a lid with a knob, and it became a fixture in many kitchens around the turn of the century. This ceramic container once held an experimental liquid that helped save countless lives. This is a story about innovation, illness, and something good that came out of a tragic encounter. It's autumn, 1851, in England. A vast international trade showcase called the Great Exhibition is coming to a close. Six million visitors have been on hand to glimpse the latest innovations from around the world. And after the exhibition is over, a passenger ship is standing by to ferry Americans back across the Atlantic. A transatlantic voyage from England to New York in 1851 was roughly 15 days to 18 days, depending on the sea. The majority of people on these steamships were in steerage, or immigrants, or the poor. These ships in the 1850s were not luxury liners. The journey starts out smoothly, but then things take an unfortunate turn. Several youngsters on board fall seriously ill. They grow lethargic and begin to vomit. They couldn't keep any food down. And then the unthinkable occurs. One by one, the children pass away. I think anyone would be heartbroken and very concerned for the people. A mysterious and deadly ailment is sweeping through the ship. People were worried for their lives. Ships didn't have doctors. There's no medicine. One passenger takes it upon himself to figure out the source of the problem. 50-year-old Gail Borden. Gail Borden was a former school teacher. He was not a doctor, but he wanted to get to the root of it and make sure it never happened again. Borden begins by focusing on what the children had in common, and he soon zeroes in on one link. In the days before their deaths, they had all drunk large quantities of fresh milk. Cows were on board ships at this time because there was no good way to carry milk on the ships. There was no refrigeration. You could bring ice on the ship, but the ice would melt. So you would have cows on the ships that you can milk and have fresh milk for the cabin passengers. So Borden inspects the cow pens and finds that the animals, too, are sick. He concludes that whatever afflicted the cows could have been passed on to the children in their milk. Borden was very disturbed and angry. The children were sickened by the very thing that was supposed to provide nourishment. What Borden does next will fix a foul problem and kickstart an entire culinary phenomenon. The food industry was about to undergo a major overhaul. It's 1851. Travelers on a US-bound ocean liner are falling ill and dying from a mysterious disease. One passenger named Gail Borden thinks he knows the cause of the epidemic, contaminated milk. So what unexpected invention will emerge from this curdled cruise? Back home in New York, Borden vows to find a way to make cow's milk safer. Borden was very tenacious, and he's not gonna divert himself until he comes up with the answer. What he needs is a way to preserve milk without it having to be refrigerated. He comes up with a special airtight pan that allows milk to boil at a lower temperature. As a result, the liquid thickens. His idea was to put it into this vacuum pan where there's no oxygen. The oxygen, in his mind, was decomposing the milk and making it decompose faster. When the test is finished, he adds sugar, cans the milk, and puts it aside for some time. He tests it weeks later and finds the milk has kept its color and its taste, with no ill side effects. Once Borden realized that this invention was successful and that he'd made safe, pure milk for the masses, I think he was over the moon. He names his creation condensed milk. And when the Civil War breaks out a few years later, this tasty drink proves advantageous for troops on the front lines. The Union Army purchases large quantities of the nutrient-rich substance, which gives the Northern soldiers a much-needed boost during battle. And that's not all. Soldiers would come home and they would say, we drank this stuff called condensed milk and it just, it, it took off. Because of Borden's invention, 
passenger ships no longer need to travel with livestock to provide milk. As a result, shipboard illnesses decrease dramatically. Gail Borden was ahead of his time. He made milk safe, and he revolutionized not just the food industry, but the dairy industry. Today, condensed milk is mainly used for baking and adding flavor to coffee and tea. And this 19th century container, specially designed to hold Borden's invention, remains on display at the Southeast Museum in Brewster, New York. It serves as a reminder of the condensed concoction that helped sweeten the world. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널, 디스커버리.